My name is Daniel Reich, and I'm a doctor and a researcher at the National Institutes of Health, just outside Washington, D.C. I work here on multiple sclerosis, and I do that by using MRI machines to take pictures of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is covered by very thin, what we call them membranes, they're called the meninges. And I found that inflammation in the meninges is really prominent in MS. And that's opened new doors into understanding how we might treat it and prevent the disease. I often say that, that there's a link between MRIs and microscopes, and sometimes I call that the mri microscope. In the past, MRIs have been used to take sort of high-level pictures of the brain. They're actually kind of grainy. They look good uh, on a film, on a screen, but they are far from the detailed pictures that we can get under a microscope. And so we have been uh, focused on developing new approaches to taking finer and finer pictures of the brain using the MRI. And we're now routinely taking pictures that are 10 times or more better than what are generally considered high-resolution pictures of the brain outside. We found out that there are some ways to use MRIs to look more specifically at the meninges. It's one of the places where the cells from the, that travel around in the blood, the white blood cells, can get inside the brain or, or leave the brain. What we saw were areas around the brain where this contrast dye that we would inject in the veins would leak out. We found that we could see this in about a quarter of the people that we looked at, but up to about 40%, so two out of every five, in people who had progressive forms of the disease and fewer in early relapsing forms of the disease. And we know that inflammation doesn't die down when people stop relapsing. And we think that has a lot to do with disease progression. And we're very interested in figuring out how we can identify those specific plaques and follow them over time. We think it might be able to help us identify a group of people living with MS who might benefit from certain kinds of new medications potentially for progressive MS. We're going after ways of efficiently testing them to know whether a new therapy might work uh, as well or for different aspects of the disease than what we already have therapies for. There's already one clinical trial going on at Johns Hopkins where they're using this finding to identify people who could go into the trial. Collaboration is especially important in multiple sclerosis because there are so many different biologies that go into making this complex disease, and we can't be expert in all of them. Winning the Brancic Prize, uh, it obviously means a lot to me as a researcher. It, I'm, I'm really uh, quite thrilled that the committee found our work interesting, promising, and innovative. For me, what's most fulfilling about doing MS research is answering questions, questions that matter, answers that matter, watching the work we do in the lab, in the MRI room, in our pathology lab, in our animal work, all come together into thoughts about how we might develop new medicines, test new medicines, and get them into people as quickly as we can. There's so much work that still needs to be done.